you plot it, you will have to see if there is more uh, expression, you must get more protection. Now that was the first uh, hole in the whole system, that it didn't work out that way. Uh, what, what happened was that, that uh, uh, some plants which had very little expression were better protected against the aphids uh, than some of the other plants which had high expression levels. Now this, this was the, uh, the first time when uh, we started to think about it that it's, it's this one uh, gene, one uh, protein, uh, there is something wrong with it. So uh, the way how it is inserted into the, uh, the plant uh, genome is probably uh, far more important than the expression level. And then things started to come from there on. Then we found uh, these uh, people, entomologists, uh, uh, they found that, that um, all right, the aphids were, um, in a sense, poisoned by the, the express gene. Um, but uh, when we released the uh, ladybugs, uh, they were also uh, poisoned because the ladybugs were eating the, uh, uh, the aphids and uh, the uh, gene product uh, got into their digestive uh, uh, tract. So um, now that's not much good, is it? I mean, you are just simply upsetting nature, uh, the natural balance. So what we did uh, uh, was um, that we uh, first, we took uh, the genetically modified potatoes and put as much as possible uh, of, of this into uh, the diet and we fed rats on it for a short time, uh, 10 days. That's a, uh, an appropriate time in most of the nutritional studies as a sort of preliminary short-term study. And we found uh, that there were uh, uh, some problems. And then we said, oh, but it is, is it possible uh, that uh, if we dilute it with a, a good protein, a non-GM uh, uh, protein, would these problems disappear? Would you dilute them out? Uh, so when we did that, we found uh, that, that no, we didn't. The, the problems persisted, and particularly the problems affecting the uh, gastrointestinal tract of, of the rats. The problems were that, that uh, uh, the, um, the genetically modified uh, uh, potatoes uh, induced uh, uh, what we call a proliferative growth in the small intestine. And I shall explain what, what it means. Uh, now, uh, but before I do that, the most important thing was that we pre-selected the gene that its product should not do that. So we spent six and a half years uh, of selecting out a gene whose product wouldn't do the thing which we did see in, in the genetically modified potatoes. And you may get, like with the flavor saver tomatoes, those uh, female uh, rats, develop uh, pinpoint erosions, sort of pinpoint bleedings into the, the, the stomach. Now, that is, uh, it may be, uh, uh, temporary, and if you uh, uh, withdraw the, um, the agent, in this case the flavor saver tomato, it may disappear. But we don't know. And it has to be in investigated. The secondary effects uh, can, for example, affect the, the, um, uh, the liver. And we found some secondary changes in the liver, just like is this uh, 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 recently published Malatesta paper, uh, which did establish that uh, by feeding uh, uh, young uh, rats on, on uh, 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 Roundup ready soya, uh, you do get uh, some proliferative, again, sort of higher metabolic ranges uh, of, uh, of uh, um, effects uh, in the liver of these uh, animals. Again, we don't know, if, is it pathological? Would it be reversible? Would it, but, but you have to start somewhere. You cannot start at the end. You have to start at the beginning. Remember that all these studies are done uh, 
before you can do any experiments with humans. Now, in this case, of course, the whole thing has been changed around because you're being used as, as the uh, a guinea pig. They are doing the, the experiments on you. And what is even more, you don't know uh, uh, whether they are doing it or not because uh, in the U.S., for example, it's not labeled. So, therefore, you don't know whether you're eating uh, uh, GM uh, 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 food or, or, or not.